All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about what they call OEM wiring-based uh, solar power systems and uh, uh, micro-grid power systems. It took me a little while to get the terminology figured out on this stuff, but OEM wiring it usually means original equipment manufacturer. And it's these types of plugs which are relatively industry standard for little battery maintainer charger type things. And one of the reasons the solar industry has generally wanted to shy away from these is because they can be put together backwards. You can, you can reverse polarity on these depending on a device. And there's not really definitive instructions out there you know, how the best way to deal with this is. And it's because the situations are a little different. And it's a type of a plug that kind of has a defect built into it. The other way people do a lot of 12 volt plugs or DC type wiring in solar systems is have separate um, you know, polarity based type plugs where you're not going to get the positive and the negative mixed up. So you know, there is a design flaw in this, you need to be aware of it. However, they're common, they're cheap, they're waterproof, and they, they can be useful for a lot of applications. So I decided to build an application based on these types of plugs to see how it would work out. The other thing is there's a lot of low to middling cost devices that are available that use this type of plug system. Uh, a lot of times it's from an outfit that does uh, battery tenders for motorcycles and off-road vehicles. Little things you plug in to keep batteries topped off. For those of us who mostly do solar we think well why would we want to screw with that. But it is in common usage and it allows you, let's say if you have a vehicle like the Apocalypse Trooper here stored indoors, it would allow you to keep the batteries maintained without having to have it out in the solar. The other thing about these types of plugs is that they can be, you know, uh, clipped and adapted. It's not, not a lot of work to clip and adapt these, make them compatible with other stuff. and. There's a barrel plug type, which is also relatively common with a lot of this stuff. And here you can see it's kind of polarity based. The center is usually the positive, the outer is usually the negative. If, if it's wrong, then you got a problem. And these can be relatively standardized. And when we get into this, it's used with LED lighting, which can be, um, you know, for household or camp applications. This switch, for example, is part of a kit where these switches end up being about a buck each for LED lighting, but they have these barrel plugs, which are common with some other types of automotive stuff, so it's, it gets a little tricky. So what will happen on a system like this is you, you want to try to find stuff where these things are factory installed, because if, you, if they're not factory installed, you got to kind of choke up on the wire a little bit, do a little clipping and, and splicing you end up having either shrink wrap or electrical tape in there and people are going to argue what's better. But what's generally going to happen on anything that's a pass-through device is, and, and this one's really illustrated best, is our positive always stays on one side or negative on the other, but the two plugs are different. And you'll notice that the little one sticking out here is the uh, positive, the red. And over here, the little one sticking out is the negative because th that's the way that is. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit about the philosophy on how these works. There's kits which allow you to install these on the vehicle battery. And so here I have one of the plugs. And then there's like a little safety cap for that. Okay, so here's the problem. Most vehicles are going to be uh, negative ground unless it's uh, like an 80s or 90s Honda. Most of the time they're going to be negative ground vehicles, which means that your positive wiring is carefully shielded throughout the vehicle. Your negative wiring goes to the chassis or body or metal components from time to time. So if we had one of these things kind of hanging off and our energized positive goes scratching up, let's say on this little uh, housing here, that's our energized positive if this had been hooked up that way. Well, then it's going to short and it's going to cause all sorts of problems uh, with a lot of things in a vehicle. In fact, if an energized positive were to short out around the carburetor, it could even cause a vehicle fire. So what happens is when you have an energized positive, you, you don't want it to be the exposed one. You need it to be the one that's kind of got the little plastic shielding around it. 
And if you look at those, then, you know, if you they stick in something, it's, it, it's really less likely to have a, a problem. But if there's any chance of that, well, then you get these little caps, and you have to keep these. So the one that's permanently attached to this, we've got this little cap, so that our energized positive isn't anywhere. The other thing is, the ones that would go on the, the car battery, also we're going to have a fuse holder. So there's a limitation on the amount of power that goes through these, and there are some safety concerns with this. When you have an extension cord or pass-through device, the, whether this is like a little 8-inch or 10-inch extension cord, the, the two ends are going to be different from each other, but depending on whether it's a power source device or a power receiving device, that's okay. The pass-through means that what's going to happen is, regardless of what the end is on the device, let's say we come up here, we've got the end of the device, we, we're, we, we're now hooked up to an extension cord. Whatever the plug configuration, positive or negative, is on this device, ends up also being on the other end of the cord. So, so let's say, for example, this light is an energy receiving device. When this plugs into something, it will require its positive to be here. That way, when this thing is not hooked up to anything, this is never the positive. And it's tricky to remember and figure out, isn't it? So what's going to happen is that this would be an energy receiving device and it comes with these little kits from Thunderbolt Solar and it's for testing the polarity on something to see whether or not you have something uh, correctly into an energy giving or receiving device. For example, they would assume that this 12 volt receptacle here is an energy receiving device, uh, energy giving device at this end. So it's an energy receiving device at this end and it's a giving device at that end so what's going to happen on this is that this is most likely the positive that's going to go to the center of this and and when you're adding and subtracting devices and building other things to work with this make frequent use of a multimeter test this stuff constantly because you can get the polarity reverse very easily on these things but once it's all built and once you have a system built that's pretty much the way you need to look at the philosophy. In fact, the first time I was messing with one of these, what I did was I, I clipped all the wires off, not fully understanding how or why these things were working. When you buy one of these, whether it's the new model or the old model, and here we can see it's hooked up to some stuff, we'll discuss that later, and get a couple of OEM plugs on this, and they're both different, and I couldn't understand that. Well, that's because they consider the solar panel to be an energy-giving device, um, and the battery to be the energy uh, receiving device when it's on a charge controller. If the battery's not on a charge controller, well, then that, that, that gets reversed, right? So what happens is occasionally you need to have a, a, another little wire set up as a polarity reverser, which means that this one, obviously, the polarity is, is not reversed on this device, but... If I'm going through the charge controller and a battery, which is normally an energy giving device, then becomes an energy receiving device, it receives power from the charge controller, it requires a polarity reverser. So what I do is I install the polarity reverser at the charge controller end and then basically clipped and spliced the wires so that this is a polarity reverser, this is just the extension cord going to the battery. I know it's really tricky. It even gets trickier when you're dealing with the little wall chargers for battery trickle chargers. So again, part of your kit is going to have to include at least one of these. It's been clipped and spliced and turned into a polarity reverser. Now here's where we get to some fun stuff. These little kits, about 10 bucks each from Harbor Freight, include a long extension cord, uh, a little battery clamp thing which goes to this. Um, and I've cut those up. Those are some of the first things that cut, uh, cut up. But, you know, they can work temporarily. One of these little testing devices, it's basically a small LED light that is uh, polarity sensitive. So you can tell whether you've got good or bad polarity on one of these cards um, plugs, depending on the type of device you're dealing with. And then you've got a standard barrel connector, 
which will also confuse you on whether or not one of these is positive or negative because they're not marked. Now on the barrel side, the inner is a positive, the outer is a negative. But you could fry a device plugging this in wrong. So again, keep your multimeter and your polarity reverses handy, but understand that with this adapter, there's a lot of CB radios, uh, other car electronic equipment, battery chargers, and other things that you're going to be using this type of adapter with. You can also use it with some forms of LED strip lighting. Another thing that comes with a kit, of course, are the cigarette lighter plug. Um, the nominal usefulness, there's a lot of discussion I've had on these. You really want to get away from these things. They're, they're not all that efficient, but sometimes you don't want to go cutting up a, a cord adapter on a device. And then these things, again, you, you're not likely to use it. So if you're going to be cutting one of these kits apart, to get some of these plugs and, and get useful, then it's the thing to do. Um, at 10 bucks each, it, it's, it's cheaper than buying these kit things individually. The other thing I found from, from the different stores that sell this stuff, they're all using different thicknesses and types of wiring. Some of it's incredibly thin, so it's not going to be uh, very good utility for high flow type devices. Solar panels, again, are usually an energy giving device. You might have to play with a polarity reverser, but I, because I'm building the system, I'm adjusting that to work. And what I have is this roll-out solar panel up here that I'm adapting to the system. And part of it is uh, I need to be able to power this vehicle when it's being towed behind something because there's a brake buddy, uh, brake controller, we'll, we'll show that here real quick, that requires power all of the time when a vehicle's in motion but not driving. And that's this thing. This thing's going to require power all the time. And it uses a cigarette lighter plug. These, of course, are notorious for jiggling out of something, but it has its own polarity checker. That's what that LED light is. And it, it is probably internally fused. So if I convert this over to those other types of plugs, the big benefit of these OEM type plugs is they, they don't jiggle loose and then cause your equipment to fail. That is the big problem with the cigar lighter stuff. It was never made to be a permanent plug. It was never designed for that. These are designed in the 1930s for cigar lighters in cars and aircraft. So let's go into part two, which is some of the other devices I'm, I'm going to be powering with this system. Okay, so part two on this, and uh, I broke the video up into two parts. I didn't want to bore you too much with too much talking. So what happens is we've got some extension cords. I have some LED lights. You may have seen those in the earlier video, and I wasn't talking about them. And I have a box device here. This is kind of homemade, but not really. And basically a project box here. It involves some wires coming and going. And then I have our Harbor Freight charge controller. Now what this shows is it's currently charging. When these things come from Harbor Freight, they, they come with the little plugs here. And if you just leave it alone and adapt everything to this, you won't be changing it because they're on really short leads. So if you go to cut them and splice them, you end up with this, this situation. Um, so as it's plug and play, and there is labeling here that is kind of hard to read because it's so small and, and not exactly a color contrast you might be looking for. But basically it's hooked up to the car battery here plus the solar panel on the roof of the vehicle. And then it goes to another device which I chose to just tape to the back. So what this device is, is an AGT WR02. It relatively simple and this is best, I mean we can show this and then we can show the wiring diagram and basically coming from a battery or power supply we go into the box and we have an output one and output two now the output one is a um, a brown and, and yellow cable and the output two is a green and blue so basically the brown and yellow is one circuit the green and blue is another what these are hooked up with is a receiver for key fob transmitters so with a key fob transmitter, what we can do is we can control these two lights. Or we could control other types of devices that are 12 volt devices. It's controlled on a hardwire, so with the little extension cord that comes with this kit, 
and then hooking these devices up. They, they came with a length of wire on them. They're an off-road light. Um, what happens is we're plugged into this. We're plugged into extension cords into this thing. So it allows for extended reach remote control lighting at campsites. So I could be, let's say, sitting in a motorhome, having this parked outside. We could have motion sensor lighting, or you could see something, hear something, turn on a light temporarily if everybody has a key fob, go do what you got to do with the lights on, and then turn it off. Again, poverty of power when you're solar powered and you're only based on batteries and it's not grid power and there may be limitations to this. What I found is that with intermittent use of the lights at night um, and decent sized solar panel on a system, what will happen is using the Apocalypse Trooper as a power base for the outside the motorhome camp, it, it's not that bad. What it will do is it the, the battery system on a vehicle, and I'm probably going to be adding an additional battery to this, can power much of the rest of the camp. It probably won't power something like a, you know, a, uh, an inverter with a vehicle running for very long, but with this native 12 volt stuff, it seems to be doing pretty well. And then when everything's all packed up, all of this pretty much goes in the ammo can under the hood or an ammo can elsewhere. One of the things I'm probably going to do is permanently modify an ammo can with some uh, wire outlet positions on it. And then all of this goes inside along with the, uh, the spare cabling and wiring and the lights that, that, that can all fit inside the ammo can. And what that boils down to is a power system, a relatively portable power system with lighting, remote control lighting for campsite use. Other 12 volt items that you could also mess with are USB adapters, but I already have a strip like this mounted in the vehicle and 12 volt plugs. Again, I would already have those mounted in the vehicle. The thing about using off-road lights as camp lighting, I found, is they're not positioned high enough. Okay, so if they're not high enough in the air, um, as you walk around camp, uh, you have light in your face. If we put these up on a string, let's say up in a tree, then, then we have area lighting, and the switching isn't that difficult because you can just carry your key fob around, and that's how you switch it, and that's how I think the system's working reasonably well.